the topic of watching back your own demos from both scrims and official games <clears throat> is one I think is particularly pertinent to NA CSGO pros. Now, it is worth pointing out, and I've, I've said this multiple times, EU pros, the top level EU pros, Olaf Meister doesn't watch back the games that Fnatic played and look for little mistakes. Guardian doesn't do so. The difference is, though, these are the best players in the world. These are the best teams in the world. At the moment, they have other competitive advantages, which means this is a luxury that they don't have to do this. But if you're an NA team and an NA pro, you're looking for any little advantage you can get to get a step up now, to bridge the gap between you and these top teams. And so that doesn't mean just doing what they do, because at the moment, they're doing it better, but it means doing what they do and doing what they aren't willing to do and doing things they haven't thought to do yet and trying to gain ground on them actually and that's the way you're going to catch up and overtake them so i saw this this brought up a while ago when someone was talking to i think it was hazed from clg and someone asked him like do they watch analyze critique demos of their scrims and look for you know where setups go wrong or where they might you know something might have gone they might have got a bad habit that started to develop and hazed said not as much as we watch other demos. It's something we have talked about adding to our practice schedule instead of something we do on a whim. The reason we don't commit to doing it is because we usually see and call out the mistakes on the spot and try to fix them instantly. Now, that's very naive to think that you can do what he says in that last sentence. You know, call out mistakes on the spot and just fix them instantly. Because even knowing what you did wrong or saying what you did wrong is not enough. That doesn't fix it. You need to know what led you to the point that you made that mistake. And then if you can fix that, the precursor, sometimes you might not be able to fix the thing at the end in the final instant, but you can fix all the precursors so you won't be in that situation. Likewise, you need to practice to break habits. You need to go into practice with one specific little goal like this. Like we're not going to overpeak at this part of the site when we're trying to do an aggressive CT defense. And you're just going to work on that over and over. That way it becomes ingrained. It becomes a new habit, which is the way you want to play. And it becomes part of your game. You can't just go, ah, we made a mistake on that one round in that particular case. So just don't do that again, guys, and continue on in. Because the decision making that put you in that situation is not going to have been radically changed. The The... Things that you were doing on a small level that get mean that you make that mistake are not going to be changed. You're just going to think at the end, oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that. That's it. You haven't fixed anything at that point in time. So another thing that he said, he said, the worst thing that can happen to a pro player is to put in question every minor mistake they make. It shreds their confidence and in the future might not make the right choice out of fear of it being the wrong choice. So I personally don't like to be too critical of plays. But as explained above big mistakes game losing mistakes need to be addressed and usually are within the game itself or at least brought up post-match so here's the thing i agree with him on one level like you shouldn't all be sat around with five players and you shouldn't keep pausing it every second like oh this tiny little mistake you made here you made you fucked up that part like yeah that is going to shred people's confidence that is going to make them a second guess every move they do in game but that's part of the point i'm making if you practice it a different way and you work on the bigger macro aspects and even macro in terms of the individual player the way he makes decisions the way he reacts to things, if you make good habits out of those, that's going to fix the base there. So as you say, you're not going to be second guessing within the game. You're going to keep following your instincts and what you've practiced, but what you've practiced has changed. That's the point we're making here. We're looking for bigger issues in decision making or when people go outside of the team concept, the team system, the approach that we have to playing our style, our system and hierarchy of calls and where people play and how they react and rotate off each other. Right now, NA teams and pros watching demos of themselves and, as a side point, their coach listening back over the voice comms that he should record of their scrims would give them a huge boost and would help fix a lot of the fundamental problems in these teams. I mean, it's going to be very hard work and it will seem boring, but the, be the fruits will bear out. The benefits will definitely be seen if you go ahead and do this. I mean, there's a great example, okay, of the player Kobe Bryant, one of the all-time great NBA players. Now, this player is a top 10, top 20 all-time player to ever play basketball. He's someone who, if you hear the stories about his natural talent when he came in the NBA at 17, he was already a very good player. Not, not at the NBA level, but as in his raw skills, his fundamental skills, his basic talent level was already very good. He was already going to be a, a good player. He could have been an NBA all-star without working too much more on his skills, just working the same amount everyone else did. He could have been maybe an all-time great player without working on some of these aspects. But from very early in his career, he was looking for ways to improve. And one of the things he did was, in 1999, the year before the Lakers got Phil Jackson, all-time great coach, who they won five championships with afterwards... 
Phil Jackson was at the Bulls and they'd won six championships. And what people, a lot of people don't know is it wasn't just Phil Jackson. He had as an assistant coach, Tex Winter, who was the guy who invented the triangle offense, which is the system the Bulls used. And then Phil Jackson implemented the Lakers in his two stints of coaching after 1999. So Kobe called up Tex Winter and he was asking him some details about how the triangle works. And then the next year, Phil Jackson comes over the Lakers, becomes the coach and Tex Winter comes with him. So Kobe literally goes to Tex Winter, who he called Yoda. And he's literally talking to this guy like, you know, how does the triangle Angle work and what do you want to do here and he asks Tex Winter like will you look over the game tapes with me of the game we just played Tex Winter says sure so Kobe goes to the game tapes and he goes to like fast forward like, okay we'll find my first touch like here and Tex Winter goes no 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 no, no. We're, we're not doing that we're going to watch the whole game we're going to watch the whole game through we're going to analyze all aspects of the game we're going to figure out what happened and what the macro aspects of the game were and what the decision making was and then your, your parts are going to be part of it but they're going to comp compose part of the system and ever since then that's exactly what kobe did even when tex winter wasn't with him anymore tex winter is actually dead now so that's what he would do at the time and what people have to realize here is this is an approach to greatness. This is trying to fix these small aspects. You can't just think like Kobe Bryant, I'm sure after the fact when a play goes wrong, knows in his mind, oh, I yeah, fucked that up in that way. But that's not going to allow him to change it next time. He's not going to remember that next time. He has to change the way he practices. He has to change the way he conceives of the game and conceptualizes it in his mind. He has to change the way he thinks of his teammates. Maybe that was part of the decision making. Or he didn't think this guy was open or he didn't understand that that guy would move to a different position and create space for him. This is why studying these games, your own own games is going to be so beneficial yes it's obviously very important to study the opponent to study the way opponents work and to study the, the way the meta game is working and apply that but when you study yourself and you master yourself you know thyself as the ancient greeks used to say you're then going to have a better understanding of yourself and expand your own skill set and your own decision making so that you then have a wider toolkit from which to attack an opponent that you've now studied doesn't matter if you study the opponent you find exactly what would work against him and where he's weak if you don't actually have the ability to execute what would take to defeat him or you don't have that in your toolkit that's not in your locker the ability to do that so this is what you need to work on to expand your own game and by the way this doesn't just apply to pros if you're just a lower level player and you want to get better and you want to improve this is one of the best ways you can improve look back over your demos because when you look back over your demos you're going to be able to study your positioning was this the right sort of positioning for the way they were playing the opponent is this intelligent position making positioning even if it worked even if you won at this level would it work at a higher level maybe not when you take angles to take shots do you take an angle in an intelligent way an efficient way did you take it in a way that left you open in a certain sense when you re-peak a certain re-peaks ones that you do because you can gamble and that's a lower level opponent would that work as a higher level opponent Try to remove all emotion and all feeling that you would get if you're in the game thinking about the move and what you think of what the opponent's going to do. And remove all that and observe yourself logically from outside yourself. Look for small things you can do that you will improve upon. Now, don't look for 50 things. If you try and apply 50 things at once, it will be chaos. It will make you much worse. Try and find one thing. Go back into the game and practice with that in mind. Do a week's practice of that. Do two weeks practice of that. Wait till it's improved a bit. Now find another little thing. Work on that. Work on that. Don't try to use huge macro things because you won't have application for them. Take the huge macro thing, break it down into multiple little steps and apply them one at a time. This is how you will improve. This is how North American pros will improve. This is how you can start to bridge that gap. And the fact that the European players don't do this at the moment is great for you. That means you can actually gain a little bit of a ground on them in terms of how you're practicing. And one day, maybe they'll have to do that maybe that'll be the way that they can gain levels i mean obviously by the way the obvious corollary point you should make here is lesser european teams can do this as well and gain ground on the top european teams